Good afternoon, my name is Tamara Stegerhal and we're at the Harassist Conference. Uh, we have the honor of speaking with Deepa Varpa, who uh, was a diplomat in many countries representing India. Um, and Deepa is also a very accomplished and highly sought after board member. We're very honored to have you here today uh, to understand your story and what other women who aspire to be board members such as yourself can learn from your experience. Wonderful to be here, Tamara, really. And uh, yes, I do have a perspective of two worlds because I was a diplomat and therefore came from, in a way, from the government sector. But I interacted a lot with industry. And so it was a very natural kind of move into uh, the corporate world mm -hmm. and onto corporate boards when I retired. So I kind of segued into them. And uh, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing now because I'm able to use my expertise and also learn a lot more about corporate boards. And uh, yes, being a woman, I think, makes it special. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the evolution uh, that you have seen over the years uh, on corporate boards in India because it's been quite a dynamic uh, sector. That's right. So I must say that, you know, there were a lot of family owned businesses mm. and by chance there could be women on boards from the families. That's how it used to be. In 2013, the uh, company law in India uh, was amended mm -hmm. and in the, uh, in the amended form, uh, they made it mandatory for all companies above certain thresholds um, to have women directors on their boards. Mm -hmm. They also made it mandatory for the first thousand listed companies to have non-executive independent directors on their boards, at least one. Mm -hmm. So that was a great beginning and I was talking about 2013, effective probably 2014, so we've had one decade of this. And I think what has happened is to begin with, of course, the boards had to induct women. And probably a lot of the boards had the token one woman who was there, it was required by the law. Um, and uh, what I find now, it's my own experience on the boards that I am, is that they're choosing to actually uh, get far more women on the boards. Um, and I think this is a very good trend because uh, they find women contribute. I think uh, it also helps the image of the company. You're very competent women. Mm. Perhaps more women are coming forward now than they were before. Yeah. You know, who didn't quite know what it is about. So now you have far more women who are coming up, you know, forward and wanting to join the boards. So it's a, a very interesting dynamic at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, we also now, of course, as you know, have um, ESG ratings. Um, mm -hmm. And this is true also of India. And there are reporting requirements. And because of this, I think, uh, it's it's in a way a pull factor to get more women, you know, yes, because of the diversity angle of the ESG. Yeah, and very topical as we see other Asian economies also follow suit. Uh, in Singapore, we are also now uh, bringing in legislation that really requires the same level of diversity. Um, having lived with uh, these policies and these affirmative actions uh, for the past decade already in India, um, what advice would you give um, listed companies, perhaps also in other jurisdictions, as they consider bringing women on boards? Um, what would I think about other companies? You mean? Uh, yeah. What how can they enable the women on the boards, uh, especially as you as you rightly point out? Um, some may struggle with the perception that they're as a token woman. Uh, do you say? Do you think that that is uh, justified, or is there something we can do to make it more than just a token diversity effort? No, I do see as as women came as anything that's new. You know, in the beginning it was kind of, as I said, a requirement. But I think as more women came, people are more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Women have become more comfortable in boards. I think men who really have dominated the boards have become more comfortable with having women there. And there are a lot of other new things that are happening with women. I mean, not only the independent directors, which is what you know, I, I was talking about, mm -hmm. but I think what's happening with the same family concerns, family-run businesses, mm -hmm. the younger generation who are educated in different parts of the world, and the women are typical modern women. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very happy to be there, and they want to be there, and they're running companies and things. Mm -hmm. So there is far more visibility of women. Mm -hmm. So not only on boards, but generally in corporate India, there's a huge visibility of women now, you know. So I think nobody's questioning any longer. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we see. What advice would you give to women who are aspiring uh, to become established board members? How would you, uh, what advice do you wish somebody had told you that you can now pass on to other women? 
Well, you know, in anything that you do, to be confident, you've really got to know the basics. So I think for me, you would be surprised. I spent about a year learning company law and understanding what the processes were and understanding, you know, case law and things. It was important to know. So uh, when I got on there, that I knew what I was talking about. And sometimes there's diverse industries. Mm. So you first really got to know your facts and be confident when you get on there. And then once you are there, I think there, you know, it, it's much smoother. Um, it is a man's world. You're breaking into it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think women, you know, women who would come into these positions would already be professionals mm -hmm. who have done work somewhere else, who have their own domain expertise. You know, there are they probably would be women with a kind of a uh, the background that is required by the company. So they only should know of these opportunities and be willing to come. I must tell you, one of the factors that sometimes used to keep women away or anybody away actually, you know, as independent directors was the liability angle, mm, you know. Yes. And you have to make sure that, you know, you really, in a way, aren't held responsible or if you are, what do you do, you know, for, for the sins of, of the company. Mm. And I think this was a fear factor because what has happened in India is that um, I, I think the these the rules are becoming tighter and tighter you know and there are a lot of reporting requirements and mm -hmm. uh, so there's far more scrutiny of companies now and that makes people a little scared compliances have got much harder now than they were before mm -hmm. so that was a little bit of a factor that kept people away mm -hmm. but I think every time the government realizes there's something like this they come in and try to say that you know they try to assuage it um, and so I think now we're in a position where far more people should go Hmm. Thank you. Um, how do you feel that your, uh, your career as a diplomat, a career diplomat, has prepared you for the dynamics uh, of the boardroom? Well, for one, that you, um, and I'm talking about my gender, that you were interacting with people from different disciplines, you know, different uh, walks of life, and, uh, you know, you were looking at uh, issues you're doing crisis management that's a lot of what we do in our jobs and you also have a very important thing that you've got to know your own country your own industry very well when you're outside because a lot of our time now is spent on economic diplomacy mm. you know to promote investments technology you know trade that sort of stuff so that you come with a very very strong economic background and that also helps you. You come into, you know, when you come into uh, a boardroom, it's very much a repetition of what it is. You know, you've be, I've sat and negotiated uh, in the United Nations, I've negotiated for my country, mm. and you're really sitting there, and you're discussing issues, you're finding solutions, you know, so it's, it's somewhat, in some ways, the same thing, but perhaps within a more restricted framework, I would think. Yeah. You touched on something that I thought was really interesting and that I also touch upon with uh, women that I speak to about board positions, and that is that uh, you know you have to be very thoughtful and intentional about you know how you add value, but also which boards you might want to join. Um, as you have considered the different board opportunities that have presented themselves to you, what's your approach to due diligence and, and what would you say is important? Oh, absolutely. You've got to do that. You can't join board without, you know, without doing, uh, you know, your own due diligence mm -hmm. and um, probably looking at the board reports for the past few years, reading up as much as you, you can about them. Mm -hmm. And very importantly, looking at who are the other board members along with you and yes. what is the kind of diversity on the board. And here diversity, I'm not talking gender, but what kind of backgrounds do people come from? Mm -hmm. I mean, a legal background, finance, you know, so that kind of diversity also is important. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact of, um, the composition of the board is something that in a, for me was a very important factor in determining where I would go. Yeah. So it is a two-way due diligence process, right? Yeah. Do you, you interview the board members as much as they interview you when you consider You know, there's not a formal interviewing process, but mm -hmm. you do get, you do get to, you know, when you're invited first to learn about the company, mm -hmm. and you perhaps know more, you get to know the management, their briefings that happen, mm -hmm. to tell you about the company, and you know, you can have all your answers, your questions answered. Mm -hmm. And then you finally get to know the other board members. So there's a process that you go through before you finally do uh, join the board. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for this. Welcome. I'm sure there are many women, and men indeed, who, uh, who would really appreciate the, your insights. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Damara. Pleasure talking to you. Thank Pleasure. you.